Okay, here's uh, Tamar. You see how beautiful her uh, photography is. She's going to be doing a uh, more extensive flora, um, more of a reference book. In, but she has to like wait five seasons so they can um, get all phases, seed and you know everything. Next month, just for you that might be not staying for the whole thing after the presentation, uh, Mike Boss from Hidden uh, Forest Nursery, formerly Sonoma uh, Horticultural Nursery, will be telling about that fabulous garden with all the unusual and interesting trees and uh, kind of his journey through protecting it and um, struggling to revamp the nursery and such. So that's um, next, uh, next month. Hi, everyone. Really look forward to talking with you next month. Well, there he is right there in the flesh. <laughs> if you could join us. Further ado, Tamar has joined us. I don't know, Kristen, do you feel like um, introducing her? Sure. I have to tell you guys, I love Zoom. I tried to get Tamar to come, was it four years ago now, Tamar, I think? Um, Paniote Colitis and I uh, tried, he got her invited to Denver Bot Garden. We had invitations and she was denied a visa to travel because they were afraid she was a flight list risk which just shows what they knew. Tamar is the only person that I know of who gives tours of Armenia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Turkey, a whole floral region that I'm, she's going to talk about how many of them would actually do well here and um, that nobody knows about for various reasons. I saw her first on Facebook. She does fabulous pictures. She's runs a group herself called Plants of Armenia. I highly recommend that you go and follow it because it's just way fun. She comes up with stuff I've never seen. I share it onto a group that I just developed called Really Rare Plants. I hope she's not offended because I think it'll bring people back to her site. She gives plant tours and I would love to go on one. In the mountains there, the stuff that she shows just blows my mind. And I knew that I wanted her to come four years ago, but that, as I said, was not possible. But now she's here and I'm so excited, Tamar. I cannot tell you how excited I am that you are here. Thank you so much for coming. And I know we can't give you a clap because there's that has not been developed on Zoom, but here's Tamar and maybe we all can go to visit her. We can wave, Mike's waving, um, and do a tour with her someday. I would love that. Tamar. Do you hear me? Yes. How we do. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then I share my screen to show you my presentation. It's too early for me. I woke up at 5 uh, 30 evening, morning. <laughs> You're exactly yeah, 12 fun. hours different from us, right, Tamar? 11. 11. 11. Hours. Oh, that's worse. Yeah. So my presentation is about a little bit Armenian, a little bit Armenian flora climate and geography. So you see uh, here one of my favorite plants. It is Acanta Limon Armenum, location and size of Armenia. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> people, uh, not all people know what is Armenia, where is Armenia and how big is Armenia. So that's why I made some calculations and uh, I copied some uh, maps uh, from Google to show you the location of Armenia. So here you see that Armenia is in the Caucasus, uh, located uh, between uh, Black and Caspian Seas. But on the second picture, you see that uh, here is Armenia and there is no seashore. We don't have any sea. So, the only uh, big, big lake is Sevan, it's here. So it's, uh, you see the size of Sevan, 1,242 kilometers square, that lake. And it is, uh, the altitude is 1,900 meters. It's a freshwater lake. It's the biggest uh, freshwater lake of Caucasus. So uh, the size of Armenia, it's one of the smallest uh, countries of the world. It's less than 29,000 kilometers square. But what is 29 kilometers square? 
uh, just show you, I made some calculations, some comparisons. So bigger than Armenia, for example, California, 15 times bigger than Armenia. Sweden, 16 times bigger than Armenia. Caucasus, this region where Armenia is located, is bigger 15 times than Armenia. Iran, our southern neighbor, 57 times bigger than Armenia. <laughs> Turkey, our western neighbor, 27 times. Georgia, our northern neighbor, 2.4 times. And Azerbaijan, three times bigger than Armenia. So as you see, Armenia is the smallest country in our region and one of the smallest countries of the world. So that was the administrative location of Armenia. And this is geographic location of the country. So modern Armenia is the part of Armenian highlands. So this is Armenian highlands. Armenian highlands are surrounded by Anatolian Plateau. It is Turkey, modern Turkey now. Greater Caucasus Mountains. Uh, it's in the north, uh, plains leading to the Caspian Sea, to east, and the Iranian Plateau, it's south. The area of Armenian Highland is 400,000 kilometers square. Look, it's a huge area. And the highest mountain of these highlands is Ararat. You see the uh, 5,100 67, uh, it is the height of Ararat mountain that is bigger Ararat. And the highest mountain of the modern country, country Armenia. So Armenia is like, it's, it's here. So Aragat mountain, 4,090 meters. So as you see, Armenia is completely mountainous country. Some facts about Armenia. So it's important to remember but that there is no zero, zero altitude in Armenia. We don't have a sea, it's a mountainous country. So these are the, the lowest point of Armenia is 375 meters above sea level. But there are only two parts in Armenia of this altitude and the highest Elevation of Armenia is 4,090, as I told before, it's Aragat mountain. But the average altitude of the country is 16 to 1,800 meters. So it's, so we, or for example, Yerevan, our capital is uh, located on, sorry, there are uh, 37 mountain ranges in Armenia. So uh, almost half of them, uh, almost 24 peaks above 3,000 meters and almost half of them of volcanic origin. And the only flat area in Armenia, the biggest, not, not the only, the biggest flat area of Armenia, is Ararat Valley. The length is 90 kilometers. And that's the place where Armenians grow most uh, crops. Actually, that valley provides Armenia with almost 40% of farm production. But if we say flat area, it doesn't mean it's completely flat. There are hills there, there are gorges there. Just It's just uh, if we compare with the rest of Armenia. So I collected pictures. For example, this is how this is how look uh, volcanic mountains. Uh, as you see, this is a volcanic mountain range, Gerama. And here you see how they look. Uh, this is the crater. And there are such little lakes everywhere. Below you see how look fold mountains. As you know, uh, maybe that is one of the re reasons of high biodiversity of Armenia because there are different mountains. As you know, fold mountains, the rock, different rocks, they support different vegetation. So, and this is the picture of the Ararat Valley. Landscapes of Armenia. So these are main ecosystems of Armenia. I collected six, six pictures to show you how looks Armenia. What are the main ecosystems, main uh, landscape uh, landscapes of Armenia? So first is semi-desert. So this is one of my favorite ecosystems, favorite parts of the country because 
I go here to these areas in March, in April, in, in May uh, to see irises, to see fritillaries and uh, other wonderful plants. Step and uh, meadow step areas. Actually, this is a picture of a dry step with mostly juniperus, polygarpus, uh, juniperus, uh, uh, Depressa, but this is another very common picture very scenery uh, for Armenia. Uh, so another another wonderful area for finding uh, beautiful flowers. Are it open woodlands um, with uh, Acer uh, Iberica, with uh, uh, Quercus Iberica, and Cotinus cogigria, Rus coraria. Punica granatum and other other plants. Uh, and you see in this picture there are tulips here. This is the best area to see orchids and tulips. Uh, forest, real forest. Unfortunately, only 11% of the country surface of the country is covered with uh, forest. But those are wonderful forests, mixed forest with uh, Fagus orientalis, with acers and. Uh, Carpinos and, uh, and other other trees and bushes and, and forest plants. And wetlands. Again, unfortunately, we don't have uh, uh, vast wetlands, but there are enough wetlands to have wetland vegetation and, and the birds. Subalpine and alpine meadows. So this is a very common picture for Armenia. So this picture, this kind of scenery, you will see everywhere in Armenia if you go higher, if you drive higher, uh, for example, to 2,800 uh, 2, meters, 3,000 meters, 3,500 meters. So as you see here, uh, Primula algida and other uh, alpine plants, are, so it's, it's another rich, rich area. Life in the mountains. So the capital of Armenia is a modern modern city. It's not interesting. Just to you see, you can see similar cities uh, in many countries, but uh, I love more. Uh, I love more uh, villages, and where people still live, uh, have some traditional life. So uh, these are some pictures of Armenian villages. So this is a village in the south of the country. This is the village in the central part of the country. This is just landscape near Yerevan. By the way, you see in this picture, it's a very rare par uh, Astragalus, Astragalus paradoxus. And the village in the north of the country, the north is much greener because it's a more Caucasian ecosystem with uh, rich, nice forests and more precipitation. And in this picture, you see how Armenians dry persimmons. They just um, hang them and dry in sun almost a month. And this is an old abandoned house just to give an idea how look Armenian traditional houses in the villages. Climate of Armenia. <laughs> Again, this is a picture from Google map, but I made, I colored the, this uh, map Everything is very approximate, just to show you how diverse is the climate inside the country. So there are three vertical zones in the country. Dry continental, that is low altitude. Mo moist continental, that is mid altitude. And highlands, of course, always cold with, uh, with snow, almost uh, even in summer. And there are six uh, regional climate zone inside the country. Uh, just uh, some, for example, this is Ararat Valley. I told you before, this is the uh, biggest flat the valley of the country. It's, uh, the climate is uh, continental. It's a very dry area with long summer. Summer starts here in April and finishes in Mm, October sometimes. It's a, a, mm, it's a very dry area with uh, hot and uh, short winter with very um, mm, little precipitation. And 
just to see this is a bit higher area uh, again i wrote here uh, what is the climate just <laughs> approximately uh, number three is the middle part of the country need a mid mountain area with forests this is where uh, most uh, resorts are located because of this forest, because of the climate and ski resorts, because um, in, this is the winters here uh, are very, very snowy. There are sometimes, there is sometimes a meter uh, of snow here in this area. And uh, number five is interesting. It's, uh, it's the lowest parts of the country. This is what we call subtropical climate. As you see, in Armenia, we have some <laughs> parts with bananas, with kiwis, with uh, some other plants of, uh, of uh, Mediterranean basin and so on. And, uh, and high altitude zones of the country, it's white, where the elevation is um, high. It's a cold area. Summers are short here, cooler here, and winters are long and snowy. And if you see, okay, and I just indicated these black dots, it's very approximate. Um, the mountain ranges with the peaks are more than 3000 meters, uh, plant diversity of the country. Again, uh, I made some calculations. Uh, so plants recorded in Caucasus. As you remember, Caucasus is bigger 15 times than Armenia. So there are 6,400 plant species recorded in Caucasus. In Georgia, which is 2.4 times bigger than Armenia, 4,100 species. Armenia, 3,600 species. Sweden, which is 16 times bigger than Armenia, 2,000 species. And California, I'm, I hope I'm correct, uh, 6,300 species recorded in California, which is 15 times bigger than Armenia. Mm. Yeah, and biodiversity of Armenia is similar to Peru, Ecuador, Eastern China, the countries of Mediterranean basin, for example, Greece. If you see those maps in the internet where they show the biodiversity with uh, different colors, you will see the same color uh, on Armenia and Peru, for example, China and, uh, and Mediterranean basin. And what is the reason of this high biodiversity? Um, I think it's vertical zonation because every time, even in summer, even right now when uh, it is 40 degree in Yerevan, you can drive an hour and you, you would see a, a mountain, you would drive high, drive high <laughs> and you would see mount, uh, alpine plants there. You would see there's some snow, some alpine plants. If you go down to the gorges, to the rivers, you would see different vegetation. And, and another reason of this uh, rich biodiversity is that Armenia is, uh, is a border of two big ecosystems, Caucasian, it's in the north, and Irana Turanian. For example, uh, my, uh, an another, my favorite country, Georgia, where I go very often, I usually do the trips in Armenia and Georgia. It's mostly green country. Green color is everywhere with rich forests and just, it's a green country. But Armenia, uh, there are semi-deserts in Armenia, like it's very similar, the area is very similar with the north of Iran. So that is why there are uh, semi-desert plants and forest plants and, and so that makes this uh, biodiversity. Plural of Armenia, the Institute of Botany, we, we have an um, National Academy of Science. It's uh, the Institute of Botany is the part of that uh, uh, um, academy. It was founded in 1938. And since 1954 to 1999, 10 volumes of the Flora of Armenia were published. And the 11th volume was published in 2009 with Poesia family. 
So you see how many plants are uh, included in those uh, 11 volumes. So 3,260 species and the families in the first 10 volumes and the 11 volume, which is the Poesia family, 335 uh, uh, species of Poesia family. Um, there are 452 plants recorded in the Red Book of the country, and there are um, more than 120 uh, species of endemic plants. So here I put, I use some pictures of my favorite plants, for example, Pulsatilla armena, Vavilovia formosa. It's a wonderful plant, and I know only two locations of this plant. It grows, it's an alpine plant. It grows uh, in, on 3,200 meters. And a very common plant, Jurinea moschus and Stachys inflata. People and plants. As I told before, Armenian people, especially uh, people who live in the villages, they are still uh, have a traditional life. And if you come in Armenia in May, uh, in April, you would see many people in the mountains collecting uh, herbs. And they collect those herbs and they use, uh, they cook them. Those are wild plants. Uh, they use them as um, in traditional medicine. And here I collected just a little, little list of the plants people use in, for example, they, uh, they cook them or use uh, in salads or dry them or pickle them. For example, Pushkinia styloides. Uh, people collect the leaves of Pushkinia styloides and they dry it. So people use it, uh, the, those leaves only dried in winter. And different alliums for pickling, for example, and Ornithogalum montanum. People collect uh, Ornithogalum montanum in April and they, they, um, uh, they make soups or just they fry it with eggs. Wild fruits and berries, almost 120 species. Honey plants, almost 350 species. Edible mushrooms and plants used in traditional medicine. So uh, these are just short list of those plants. What people use. Here you see the, the picture of Pushkinia styloides. And uh, <laughs> I told you that the people collect those leaves and they dry them. Valuable plants. What I call valuable plants. Uh, usually when I have trips, sometimes people send me the list of the plants they, they uh, would like to see, they want to see in, when they travel in Armenia, when they are in flower. So I call this, them valuable plants. So uh, this is the short list of those uh, plants, uh, popular plants. Sometimes people write me, we want to see Iris elegantissima in flower, we want to see Iris paradoxa in flower, or, or tulips, uh, or fritillaries, and so on. And I make my itinerary uh, uh, according to their wishes, wishes to see those plants. And we travel and they find the locations and then the, we see those plants. Mm, here is, uh, so there are 18 species of irises recorded in Armenia. Tulip, six species. Plants of Orchidaceae family, 43 species. Orchids, just orchid, like orchid, uh, choreophora, orchids choreophora, and so on, 12 species. Fritillaries, seven species. Gladiolus, nine species. Plants of Hyacinthella family, 34 species. Alliums, more than 50 species. Irises of Armenia. So irises are the most popular plants. <laughs> Uh, because most people who first time travel in Armenia, they want to see in, uh, they want to see irises. But when they uh, see the irises, they want to see more plants, and they come usually in June. They come usually in March or April, April to see different flora. So this is the list of the irises. Unfortunately, there are no mm, two species. Uh, I don't have the pictures of those irises. By the way, one of them is recently uh, 
just the, the scientist found recently, I think last year, it's Iris laziaca. So there are 18 species. So in the middle, you see Iris elegantissima, which is my one of my favorite plants. And this is the list of the Armenian irises. Fritillaries of Armenia. And one picture is missing because it's uh, again recently described uh, plant. And you see, I'm so happy when our botanists find new, uh, new plants, new species. So it's uh, Fritillaria tunievi. Uh, I don't have a picture of that Fritillaria. And the rest you see here, uh, those are all Armenian frits. And one of them, for example, Fritillaria gibosa, number four. It's a very rare uh, frit. I know only one location of that plant in Armenia. So tulips of the country, again, one, one species is missing, that is uh, uh, Tulipa silvestris. The rest you see here, Tulipa biflora, a wonderful plant, a plant and it grows also in, in Iran because uh, there are similar ecosystems, like same desert ecosystem with, uh, with irises. Orchids of Armenia, so there are all orchids of Armenia here. You see the pictures of all of them. So, and the list uh, of, the, of the orchids. Plants and habitats. For example, if you travel in Armenia, uh, if you see the plants uh, and, and uh, those are the habitats where you would see those plants. Iris elegantissima, a wonderful plant, a beautiful plant. Uh, it's an interesting plant because it grows also, it grows uh, in semi-deserts and also it grows in some um, cold, colder areas. For example, when they are finished near Yerevan, if you drive a little bit um, north, um, two weeks after two weeks, you would see them again in flower. So Kolchikam Shovitsi, another wonderful plant, it's widespread in Armenia. You would see it everywhere in the country in April and in, in, in May, sometimes even in June if you, if you go higher. Uh, Sterbergia fisheriana, it's uh, a rare plant, it's a red book plant. It grows only in the south, and I know only two locations of this plant. Calanthus lagodechianus. In March and in late February, our forests are like just like, like white because of this Calanthus. And it grows um, uh, with a primula, boronovi, with some scillas. Fritillaria caucasica, wonderful fritillaria here. So yeah, it's, it's mostly mountainous plant. It grows in uh, subalpine areas in higher elevations. And Iris imbricata, which is widespread in the south of Armenia, just, just millions of the flower and all the mountains become yellow because of these irises. Botanical tourism in Armenia. <laughs> It's, it's what I love. And so why is Armenia so attractive for traveling in? Because Armenia is small. There is a little, just little territory, little area with lots of mountains. Sometimes people ask me, why are we driving so long time? Because in the map, it's only, for example, there are only two centimeters because of these serpentines because we always go high and down, up and down, up and down. So, but at the same time, it's a little country. Uh, it's enough just to travel a week or 10 days and you see all, most vegetation of that season of that, of that period. Armenia is beautiful. Uh, I traveled in Central Asia, I traveled in Iran. And unfortunately those countries are, um, highly grazed, grazed. You have to uh, drive long, uh, pass long uh, distances to see some wild nature because most, most areas are highly overgrazed. Uh, Armenia is still uh, nice because it's just enough to stop the car somewhere at the, on the road, get out from the car and you see wild plants, you see uh, wild nature. 
Uh, yes, unfortunately, we also have overgrazed area. It's a tragedy for me, but that's the reality. And yes, there are breathtaking landscapes. There are there are deep gorges. There are mountain ranges, and there are seven lake. There is seven lake. It's it's another another beautiful uh, part of the country. And Armenia is old, as you know. <laughs> Armenia is the first Christian country, and there are hundreds of medieval monasteries and churches in Armenia. Sometimes when I send the itinerary, people say, why you included so many monasteries and churches? And I say, you know, those monasteries and churches are in nature. When we go there, if we go there, some of you, if, if you want, you would see the, the church or the monastery and others uh, may botanize. Uh, in the picture, this is the, one of the most famous monasteries of Armenia, Tate Monastery. It's a popular place, as you see, again, it is uh, in a very beautiful, located in a very beautiful area. And my references. So this is all I, I um, uh, made. Thank you. And I'm ready for your questions. I think we're a little bit Myself. overwhelmed. <laughs> right, beautiful. <laughs> Unbelievable. Thank you. Thank you. So do you know the range? I mean, you were talking about one of the irises. I don't even remember its name anymore, but you said that it would grow in Yerevan and then two weeks later it was blooming up at a higher elevation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, Iberica elegantissima. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, does it, do you know how, what the range of temperature and growth these plants have? I mean, not yeah, some- yeah. The alpine ones, of course, would have to probably stay in the Alps or the, you know, the alpine conditions. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah I know, I know the elevation. Uh, I know the locations. Uh, uh, it's from, I think, thousand. To... So do they have a broader range than just, I know you said you have endemics, but many of them have a much broader range to grow. Yes. In. Yes. Because, uh, uh, for example, Iris Aragantisma, you would see also in Turkey. Well, because it grows, yeah, it's it's the it's a very similar um, ecosystem, very similar area. They grow in Armenia side and in, in Turkey, and and um, also yes, they have uh, they grow in drier area and they grow in colder, hot area and colder area. So this is our Iris elegantissima. Um, the Iris uh, reticulata is. Um, yeah, we grow it here. Mm, yeah, you. Uh, yeah, I'm sure because I know my English uh, friends. Uh, they send me pictures <laughs> of it. They they grow in in uh, Great Britain, uh, and uh, our Siberica too. We grow that here. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, by the way, this first picture is also Iris Iberica. This is Iris Iberica subspecies Lycotis, and this is I Iberica subspecies Elegantissima. And mm -hmm. what is interesting, the habitat, the uh, locations of these two, Lycotis and Lycotis and Elegantissima, they are close, and you would see uh, beautiful hybrids of mm -hmm. them. Uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's very interesting to see how they hybridize. And this is another, for example, Iris grossaimi. It's a very rare plant. And Iris, uh, it's here, uh, lineolata. They look similar, but they are different, different plants. And they also hybridize because mm. the locations are close. So those are natural hybrids. Do you have people in, in Armenia who do hybridization of these things? Unfortunately, not. Unfortunately, uh, Flora is not popular in Armenia. Uh, I try to do some work with people uh, uh, to make the flora popular. And uh, I think that's the work uh, our Institute of Botany must, must do, but they are busy with other, other projects. I, I'm, I don't work in the Institute of Botany. I'm not a botanist. Uh, I am not a scientist. I just learned myself. You're a passionate person. You're a plant passionate person. Yeah, yeah. I just love love nature. That's why 
I try to make it my work, my main occupation. Tamara, what would you think that it would be the best time to go visit? Obviously, there's something to see. It depends what Spring you want. To, if you if you if you want to see irises, I I highly recommend you to see irises first, and then and then to see the rest. Uh, it's May. It's early May. Like uh, sometimes it depends how long is the spring. It's May. It might be late oh, yeah. April, late April and early May to see Iris elegantissima, and and other irises and tulips and fritillaries. Yeah, what, actually, what? actually, my favorite time is early June because you still see some irises and at the same time you see lots of summer plants, but uh, but you cannot see onco irises like elegantissima. For elegantissima, you have to be in Armenia in early May, and it's mm. it's just unbelievable scenery when you see semi desert covered with those irises. Which one? Which is the iris that you're talking about? The early May. Elegantissima. This sensor. Oh, the elegantissima. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So you mostly showed us bulbs, but I've seen because I hope you don't mind that I'm sharing stuff to this group. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for. That. I think it makes a big difference because I'm sure they're coming to your page, but um, but I, I, so you basically just showed us the spring show, right? Because you're showing on Facebook all other kinds of plants that. Yes. Yeah. Because uh, these are the, the most popular plants, but I myself, I love summer plants. I love, I love, uh, for example, Asteraceae family. That's my favorite family. And there's some really cool ones. Yes. Mm -hmm. it, that's so why. I, have you come back to do the summer show? Oh, I'm happy, of course. Yes. I'm happy. Yeah. Good. I think we should go in person. Mm -hmm. I don't disagree. <laughs> it's it's quite amazing. Looks beautiful. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Does, does anybody sell any seeds of these plants? No, unfortunately, I told you that um, there was only one man who was in this business. Uh, unfortunately, he he died a few years ago, and no, I don't know any other person who hybridize or uh, or sells the seeds. Distribute them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but when usually people come to travel in Armenia, they take some little, for example, two three seeds and take them with them to their countries, and I don't mind at all because I'm happy to know they grow these plants in their in their places. Anybody else have any other questions? Yeah, are there any wild fruit trees in Armenia? Like of course, apples? yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, you have apples? Like, like Punica Granatum. Uh, mm -hmm. People even don't collect that because they grow bigger uh, uh, pomegranates. It's widespread in the south of the country. Ficus carica, again, widespread uh, bush. Uh, it grows almost. Um, uh, in, in most regions of the country, walnuts, uh, fagus orientalis, um, acer, ah, fruit trees, apples. And by the way, Armenia is a country of a pear trees, virus. There are, um, I think, more than 20 virus in, the, in Armenia. And uh, uh, maybe half of them are endemic. Are the punicas in the desert areas, the pomegranates? Yes, in the south. Mm -hmm. In semi-deserts, it's it's similar. Uh, like if you traveled in Iran, in the north of Iran, it's very similar. So, so you're saying pears, many pears have come out of Armenia. Yes, endemic, yeah. and, and half of them are endemic. There are uh, even uh, specialists in our botanical institute of botany. They are specialized only uh, uh, in pears uh, species uh, genus. Wow. Is the Institute of Botany a botanical garden as well as a uh, scientific? In Yerevan, yeah, in Yerevan. Unfortunately, the condition is not good. In Soviet times, uh, there used to be more than, they used to grow more than 1,000 local Armenian uh, plants. <clears throat> it's the only botanical garden specialized in uh, local plants, uh, botanical garden of Yerevan. But, um, we had energy crisis in 90s and 
they lost their um, irrigation system and they lost most of the, their plants. Uh, mm. But now they are doing well. They they have some irrigation and they start uh, again to grow some <laughs> some plants. So they're trying to revive it. Yeah, they try, but uh, what they do, I don't like uh, mostly what they do because they grow uh, not local plants. Oh, because, yeah. Uh, for example, if I had my own botanical garden, I would I would. Uh, grow just local plants mm -hmm. because uh, people when they uh, arrive to Armenia when they travel in Armenia they they don't want to see uh, European plants they can see them in their places so they come Be sure to preach plants. that absolutely right okay. from our, I, mm -hmm. I wonder um, I love the irises the iris flowers and mm -hmm. I in general I really like the fritillaries but I, I hear you have a, a, you like a lot of other plants. I'm definitely checking out your yes, Facebook yes, yes, yes. page. Yes. But I, I wonder if there, you have a favorite plant for foliage. I'm a real foliage junkie. And I'm, I'm, if you have like this, I'm wondering what the foliage does. But he, he's interested in the leaves of the plants, Tamar. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. By the way, when I was a student of the Amer uh, of my magistratura, my final paper was dedicated to Acer trout factory, which is subalpine Acer, and oh. I made some research, and I offered uh, to some nursery to grow those Acers and to use in reforestation uh, program in Armenia of Armenia, and they do that. We went to the forest, we uh, collected the seeds of that acer, and they grew now that plant and, and nice. use, uh, yeah. Nice. It's a wonderful acer, it grows. Uh, so if you drive 2,200 meters, you will see uh -huh. that acer. It's a beautiful plant. It's an infection resistant plant and it's fast growing plant. And so they grow that. Thank you. Which Acer was that again? That was Acer Trout Battery. Uh, that, uh, that is, uh, I told you that uh, the book of the, like the book of the page I lead uh, on Facebook uh, will be available in October. I, all those plans are in that, in that book with maps, with elevations, uh, with the description of the habitats. Could you tell us a little bit more about the book? How will it be available on Amazon or how? Yeah, how would... it will be available on Amazon. I saw it on uh, Amazon UK. I saw it uh, uh, on Amazon France and it will be available on uh, October, late October, if I'm if I'm right, on 28th of October. And, and there are there are the thousand eighty species in the book uh, with their maps. Again, it's um, because uh, everything is very approximate again because all the work I do myself. Uh, uh, that expeditions and so on. And uh, very often I use just my trips to take uh, pictures and to record the locations. So this is like a, a result of my work, my botany guiding work of um, eight, nine years. And there are 592 pages there and almost 3000 pictures. That's great. I'm excited. I, I'm so much nervous about that book because when I again go back and say, oh, this is this might be not correct. This, <laughs> I still have lots of emotions about that. Uh, but um, yeah, and the work was uh, difficult because all the work was remote. My designer and my, my colleague and my friend, Chris Gardner was in Great Britain. And I used to send him all the materials, like the pictures and the descriptions and the maps and asking, this picture goes with this description and this map goes with this description and these uh, pictures and so on. So that was uh, huge work because of that, uh, because uh, it was all the work was remote. And then you have to make uh, 
the right picture, and, the right map with the right description too. Yes, yes, yes. Sometimes it would, uh, when he, um, for example, used to send me some uh, finished uh, like draft. Oh my God, this is not the same. So these pictures uh, they are not, uh, the description doesn't fit to these pictures and so on. <laughs> so we changed three times the book. It, it, it's, it, it's attention to detail in a book like that is very challenging. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's just the only field guide of Armenian plants. Um, yeah, now I'm working on the second book. I hope to make a, a better book, a bigger book with 2000 plants. Thank you, Tamara. Thank, thank you so, so much. much for oh, introducing thank you to, us to Armenia. Thank you. thank you. Another one for our bucket lists. If By the way, there, there is a book of the uh, field guide, if I'm right, of the butterfly, butterflies of Armenia. And there is a field guide of the birds of Armenia. You can find them on the, in the internet if you are interested Laura. in, in uh, yeah, fauna. All I can tell you, okay. Tamara, Tamara, is that you have overwhelmed this group because they didn't know anything about Armenia and are shocked to find out how much they didn't know. <laughs> because Armenia is little. <laughs> Just yeah. a few people know about Armenia. Yeah. And the diversity amazing. is amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. So thank you very much. Website. Yeah. Thank you. Then thank you. I leave you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very We're much. Up. Yeah. Okay. That was Wonderful. Nice. Now it's like I said, everybody has a new spot for a bucket list. So next month, August 14th, and uh bring send in all your plant forum stuff and earlier if you can, that makes it easier. I love that everybody's sharing. It's very much appreciated and it makes it more interesting. We can share. And then as we mentioned, Mike, who had joined us tonight, next um meeting, August 16th. Mark it on your calendars. You'll get notices. Ellen, thank you. Thank you again for doing this. You have been a savior. Thank You're you, so Ellen. So good at it. You're so very, very good at it. Thank you, Ellen. Great. We it's like good. you doing it. Yes, yeah, <laughs> we do. We're very <laughs> sincere. <laughs> we sincerely love you, Ellen. Yeah. Don't give keep up. the love coming. <laughs> and right back at you. See you next month. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Good night, everybody.